Oh, oh, oh! Vino! You fool! Huh? Why are you here, King Dinopithecus? You have ruined this land with your presence! <laughs> and what you gonna do about it? Funny that you ask that, you disgrace! The only disgrace here is your hairline. That thing sucks! Ah! That's it! It's time for you to be cast to live out your time as a Ah! ah. What have you done to me? You have 100 days before that curse finally sets in. Now, get out of my sight. Uh, uh, I, I guess th that wasn't a dream. I'm a monkey. Did he say finally sets in? I think he meant fully. So I guess I got 100 days to kill him. So, well, come to the journey of me being a gigantopithecus for 100 days. Which means, I need some food, and since I'm a gigantopithecus, now I can smash these bushes for heaps of berries. But I still have my memory of being a human, so I was able to make myself a pickaxe, which felt odd. And I willed that thing. I'm a monkey of power. So I started to smash up some stone with the pickaxe before I could make a hatchet and gigantopithecus spear, which gives me more power. How's it going, Mr. Dodo? You haven't seen a monkey like me around these parts? Ah, that's because I'm an intelligent monkey. Ah, so that's where I need to go. Thank you. Come here, you silly raptor, and feel my wrath! Well, that tech raptor didn't last too long. And so I explored around a bit more before I took down this parasol for its hide as I needed a sleeping bag as I was getting tired and needed some rest. I woke up the next day to a parasol running past my camp with some dilos and chase which I had to take down before making a club and some bowlers so I can befriend some creatures on this land to help me with my goal. Which I then befriended this parasol called Paris which she allowed me to ride her with the saddle. And I bet you've never seen a Gantopithecus ride a parasaur. No, don't think so. Then I spotted a mini monkey who I befriended by feeding some berries to her. And her name was Darcy. And this gave me the idea. There's some islands in this beach area that could be perfect for a monkey sanctuary. So I had to set up a campsite with a place to store my food, a thatched foundation with a storage box, and then a campfire which I decided to sleep next to with Darcy watching over me. And as soon as I woke up the next day, I went high and hunted down some creatures to get some hides so I can make a canoe to travel across to the islands. But my fat ass can't fit in the canoe. No, which means I'm gonna need another way to go over. That sucks. Stupid big monkey. Hey. So after that, I needed some console from Darcy. Darcy, I can't fit in the canoe. I might have to find another place for the sanctuary. Hmm, I could do that. I could. Let me think about it. And after that, I made myself some hide clothing for some extra defense before going into the jungle with Paris, where she would have her last breath as this Gano munched away on her as I ran off to save myself. I couldn't even sleep this night as I was on high alert from this terrible tragedy. Poor Paris, you will be missed. <sighs> so the following day after that tragedy, I set up some spike walls to defend the campsite. Then I spent the rest of the day hunting creatures and gaining more power. And by the end of the day, I was able to craft a gigantopithecus home by hitting level 20. It was a comfy place to sleep for the night. I finally made myself a raft on day five and as a Gigantopithecus, I could sail across the sea to Monkey Island. Well, the first island I spotted was a bit too small for my plans. So we headed on to the next one, which was perfect size. But I had to take down some nasty dilos on this island to claim it as my own. And with that, I claimed the island with this ruins home at the center. Before making a crafting area and making some narcotics as I wanted to make some trank spears. Something I have learned from being a monkey. Then I slept in my new home feeling very safe and very eager for the next day. 
I spent the next day gathering and forging resources off the island to build up the sanctuary. Also, got myself a forge down which means I can get some metal. Monkey with metal sounds like a bit of trouble. And today I finally made myself some of those Trank Spears. 34 to be exact. And I had to test them out on this poor dodo. Which course tempted me to try and befriend this trike by first knocking it out. And this turned into a right old mission. Like, look at me, I'm running around like a bloody maniac. Like, what level is this trike? Can it go out already? Finally, she went down and I hope these berries will be enough to become friends. And while waiting for her to wake back up and see if we're friends, I made myself a smithy and I was able to craft myself some metal tools and used my new shiny pike to slam this dodo into dust. Once the trike was up, I got to know her a bit. Hey, what's your name? Well, Sharon, do you want to help me take down the King Dinopithecus? Because he turned me into this monkey and I have 93 more days before I'm fully stuck as one. So with us being friends now, we charged around the island having a good old laugh knocking things over. Before hanging out around the campfire telling stories the end of the day. It was finally time to get a home on the beach to extend the coverage of the home bonus on the island. Something that's part of the uh, Players of Dino mod that I'm using to be a Gigantopithecus. Then collected some metal before getting on the raft with Sharon and starting our journey to the Redwoods. But this journey wasn't going to be easy with this giant whale trying to break my raft. And as we abandoned it, Sharon started to attack but got too tired in the water and I had to go save her. But luckily we made it to land. But after that, I had to clear out the beach of these pegos and set up a home camp here to rest up to continue on our journey tomorrow. So we're back on the raft the following day, but that didn't last too long as the raft decided to have a mind of its own. So I headed out on Sharon taking down sabers and pegos before heading deep into the forest. Where we fought off so many bad creatures. Before calling it a night on this cliff. But before I could go to sleep the snake came along. And thought he could take a bite. So we had to deal with him. We journeyed on where we crossed this land bridge. And saw this beautiful waterfall. Where we followed the river down and fought off barriers and capros. But by the end of the day, I decided it's time to make a new raft. We weren't getting anywhere here. So we started to head off and there was another big whale. But it was kind of beached in the shallows. And it was getting a bit late. So I'm just going to sleep right here. Then, in my dreams, I was dreaming of me fighting the king Dinopithecus. And we were in a castle. Maybe that's where I need to head to. We're finally back out on the ocean. And I'm hoping for a better time. Well... I spoke too soon as the Sarko attacked me and we had to defeat it. Then a second one beelined towards me from the shore. I had to beach her off and fight off the Sarko. Ah, you bloody croc, get off me. After that, instead of going on the raft, because it just seems some bad luck with the rafts right now, we went back on foot, traveling far and wide across the world of Lost Island. Then, we reached this cliff face, and there it was, the Redwoods. I won't reach it today, but I'll build a little campsite here and sleep for the night as we enter dangerous territory tomorrow. We finally enter the Redwoods on day 12 after a long journey from the sanctuary, which I'm thinking we may never actually use at this point. Then I was attacked by these little garbage Microraptors, whom I slammed into the ground, where they belong. Then we fought one of the king's minions for the first time and I'll make them all pay for me being turned into a monkey. But the trouble didn't stop there. I was fighting off some Carnos and then some terror birds. Then got jumped by a Thyla and even more terror birds. It was, it was insane. There's so much dangerous stuff here in the Redwoods but Sharon was an absolute champ. But then I found one of my kind, a female who I courted and gave a baby. What's your name, my lady? Well, Phoebe, we're going to become king and queen of this land. So after that, I set up a little campsite. Our baby was born the next day and she was called Octavia. 
and after a journey down to the water's edge to get a drink, I came back to this diplo pushing my daughter around, and I had to smash this long neck fool into dust. Then, the cat was attacked by Kano and we vigorously fought him off. After that, I started working on the campsite's defenses and made it again as I think an army of my offspring will get me to where I need to be to take down the king. Then I spotted another one of my kind, a male, so I want to befriend him. And on the following day, that we did. Then, I had a baby boy called Apollo. So I spotted this purple drop and headed over to see what I could get out of it. Maybe some goodies. Which, by the looks of it, there isn't really much in this drop for me, but... Hey, first drop, I could still collect them. That's a bonus. Helios became a workhouse of a dude by helping me carry resources back to the campsite. And after this day, I found out my offspring can have a full armor set. Like I can. But also have the same XP as humans, which might not work out in the end, because they don't level up and get no levels and their health was completely horrendous. I continued my work on the campsite walls and then protected the base from these pesky pegos. Set up some storage boxes to hold all my extra resources that I need to build this base and then had an epic fight with the strong Rex. After that battle, I managed to befriend this Pteranodon. Nice to meet you, miss. What's your name? Well, Skylar, I'm on a mission to take down the King Dinopithecus. Do you mind helping me? Well, let's get to work and take my efforts to the sky. Then after that, I went to sleep. The following day, I went on a hunt for some bugs to harvest for some chitin. With Sharon, so I wiped out this colony of ants. I felt there must be enough to make myself a saddle for Skylar, so I could take to the skies. But on our way back to base, we had to fight off this Kano and Lila combo to show who's going to be the true king of this jungle. Which is going to be me, sir. Once back at base, I made myself that saddle for Skylar and was able to take flight. Now, have you seen a flying Gigantopithecus before? I don't think so. Then the base was attacked by a group of Dinopithecus. We fought hard to defend the base. But they murdered poor Octavia and Helios in cold blood. And I chased them down with Sharon until there was one left. And I managed to cause her to change sides. Why did you attack us? <laughs> well, I'm going to be taking down your king. Will you help me out at least? Well, Cat, get ready to get those claws dirty. Because you're helping the other side now. After that devastating attack yesterday, my only focus is to get these walls built up and make sure we have no more losses like that. <sighs> now that's a nice looking wall. The next day I went out on Cat in the hunt for some metal. We climbed up this mountain where we stopped at this point looking over the redwoods and my gosh is that a beautiful view. We continued our way up and took down this Rex before we reached the peak. There was no metal here though. So we headed to the mountain by the lake. But there was aloe trouble. I wasn't going to mess with them. And also no metal, so we headed back home and I decided to mate again to have some more offspring. Before I went out to harvest some river rocks, as these give metal. And and this allowed me to get some needed repairs. I was surprised the next day that I had twin baby girls. They were called Iris and Elena. Then I headed down to this waterfall that had a cave behind it, full of metal. Finally found the spot that I can harvest out for some metal. After that, I went and scouted out the castle with Skylar, seeing the spot where my dream was at. Hmm, we're gonna have to head here, aren't we? And then landed on the castle walls and had a nice chat with Skylar. We will be sieging this castle and taking it over soon, Skylar. I appreciate that. I have my dream here, and this is where it will all end. It was only short. I don't remember seeing you in it. 
That's right, let's get back to work. I then got myself an apprentice sword VP from the Shallow Drop, which could become a lethal weapon for me to use. Monkey with a sword, anyone? On my 20th day, I made it once again. Made myself three forges, harvest even more metal, got a saddle from this purple drop, had twin babies again, this time a boy and a girl called Athena and Hector. I made that apprentice sword and decided I should test its power. And well, I made a mistake on the creature to test it on. <sighs> and we lost Skylar to this raging Megatherium. Pain. After the loss of Skylar yesterday, I knew I needed to get revenge. But I needed more power, so I upgraded my armor to full cut and looking pretty snazzy. Tested out that monkey power on some Pegos and Dodex. They were no match. Then I had another son called Ajax. We then took the monkey army and destroyed this Parasitherium. Before taking revenge on that Megatherium, made sure he was no longer around. Nobody knew he existed anymore. The following day, we took out another Diplo. Then I tried to use a spyglass, but my monkey hands are too big, so I can't use it. Hmm, that sucks. Then I showed my dominance over this Dinopithecus to befriend her. You know each other? Then I ended the day by putting another baby in Phoebe. And the baby was a baby girl. Then I worked with Rage to harvest a lot of resources so I can build a behemoth gate, which will help me take over the Redwood Castle. Then I crafted these siege boulders and tested how much damage they can do. They seem pretty good, but they're a little bit expensive. Then I made a temple, which is where I can summon the Megapithecus at. And now I know all the items I'm gonna need, so I can summon the big monkey for the king fight. Day 24 was the day we stormed the castle, but first I got to collect some stuff from this yellow drop. And after that, I had my army behind my back and we headed toward the castle. Taking down the Sarko before we made the swim across the river. Where piranhas were biting at our feet, but they didn't stop us. Then the siege started, and the fight was intense. We lost Ajax first to this Kano. Iris. But after all that, we made it to the gate, placed down the Behe gate, claiming the inner part of the castle, and then lost the rest of my kids taking out everything in this inner part. I got a home down, and then the temple down for spamming foundations to hopefully slow down all these spawns inside the castle. I built up our crafting area before getting some much needed rest after that insane day. The next day I went on a bit of a killing spree to take out the pain of the losses from yesterday. Nothing was safe. Then I went out and befriended this pteranodon. Hello sir, what is your name? Well, that's good to know. Will you help me in my endeavor? She was amazing. I'm glad to hear that. Let's get to work. I spent day 26 on a mission. Set up more forges at the crafting area. Get a mortar and pistol set up. And then dealing with this Kana at the waterfall cave. So I can easily mine metal without any distractions. I took down the Spino on the following day. Getting my first piece of the summoning ritual for the Megapithecus. Then I tried to befriend this Kano at range. But I was not able to hit it with my Trank Spears from this range. So I gave up on befriending it for today. I was still having trouble with befriending that Kano, as they had just been grumpy about their useless arms. Poor buggers. So I made a trap instead and managed to get one in it. And we gave it that Trank Spare love. And now with some prime meat, we became friends. Well, I'm glad you liked it. What's your name, ma'am? I need your help to take down the king. Well, that's good. Let's get to it. Then, on the following day, we cleared out the castle grounds with Carol and set this Parasitherium flying. Like, boy, I wanted to become a bird. Ain't gonna work. You're too big for that. After that, I went out with rage with an explore of the west side of the Redwoods. And this didn't end up well, as I died while fighting off these Dinopithecus. And yes, I take damage while on a tame while fighting creatures, unlike you would as if I was a human. It's a little bit weird. So I headed back out to save Rage and she wasn't even getting attacked at all. They just didn't even bother. So that rescue mission was a success and I crashed out for the night. On day 30, we have built up our crafting area and it's looking very nice. I knocked up Phoebe for the last time as I knew using my kids to fight isn't going to work. So we're just gonna have one to hang around base. 
Then, I placed a bunch of storage boxes down to hold all my extra resources. Getting very organized. Ain't no monkey organized like me. We had our baby boy. He was called Nicholas. Then I headed out on Arrow for a scout on this drop which had a pacer saddle. Then I befriended another fellow monkey. And he was called Boris. But right as we became friends, we had to fight off this carnage together, making our bond very strong. No words were needed. Then, I ended up upgrading my armor to flat gear. Nice and shiny, boys. I wanted to befriend this Megatherium, and think he would love some of my Triangle Spears. But at the end of the day, I had to club him out to get him down. The next day, we headed out for a journey to hunt down some bugs to turn their chitin into cementing base. We managed to find a few to harvest before having a big fight with this grumpy fairy. This damn jickle chicken wanted the smoke, he got the smoke and he died. But all my gear was broken, so we headed back to base through the thick fog and got to meet our Megatherium friend. Hello sir, what is your name? Well Mike, do you want to help me smash a certain type of bug? The King Dinopithecus, of course. That's good, let's get to it. After that I fixed all my gear and got ready for an adventure tomorrow. It's day 33 and we headed out to find some beaver dams to get some easy cementing paste so I can make a saddle to ride Mike. And once I found some, it was an easy job. Just drunk the cementing paste out, destroy the evidence by getting rid of the wood and we're on our way. So I made that saddle for Mike and then I went out and befriended this Maywing out in the plains. Well, nice to meet you, Skipper. I do need that indeed. Well, that sounds good, Skipper. Let's get going. We had the journey back home during the night and got attacked by some pegos before we got home to have a late sleep. Once I awoke in the morning, I got to zoom around on Skipper and got this mammoth saddle from this drop. Then spotted some griffins and a big bad giga, which we will stay away from. Managed to get these nice booties and a new saddle for Carol from this drop, which is nice. Then we had a fight with this big bag rex with Skipper, doing his signature belly flop slam. And I had to end up throwing some stones at him to finish it off because Skipper just took too much damage. We headed home to test out Mike's power, which turned into a bit of a mess. A big mess. Day 35 was all about collecting resources. The next day, I befriended this Megaloceros. Hello, sir. Help of what, Sonny? I'll help you find her if you help me in return. Let's go then. So we gave him a saddle and went out to find his wife, which we did hiding in one of my homes. No worries, Sonny. Well, you are safe now, so let's get going. I then collected a bunch of thatch with Sonny. At the end of the day, he's pretty OP at collecting it. So on day 37, I was thinking, I'm having a bit of a problem getting water. Like, either I have to go over the castle walls down to the river and risk my life, or go into the frontal area of this castle and risk my life again. So I think it's time we set up a farm, and a way to drink up some water, without putting myself in danger. The farm was set up next to the crafting area, and I started getting pipes up to the top of the castle, from the river. But these bears thought they could ruin my day. But... I got flight, boys. I got some wings to ride. You ain't getting me today. So at the end of the day, we got the pipe system finished. And now we can get water up here. It's pretty nice. The next day, I got some compost bins added to the farm so I can get fertilizer. I also planted my first long grass seed and citronel seeds. I will start getting those juicy crops to feed my army. On day 39, I decided I need to make homes for the creatures I have befriended. So we started with making a home for Sharon which she liked. Then I started work on the Gigantopithecus home above the crafting area. This is where I'll end up sleeping. Phoebe and me will be keeping as a home, you know? It'll be the home for my kind. On the next day, I finished off Sunny and Daisy's home, which was a nice cozy home for them. Then I continued work on other homes before planting some rock carrot seeds into the farm. We only needed one more seed to have a full set of crops. I got Skipper's home completed on day 41 and then finished Rage and Cat's home, where I started to build a second floor for Era to chill out on. But I couldn't get it finished by the end of the day, so I went to sleep. We'll finish it tomorrow. We finished with Era's part on the following day, as I said I would. Then I asked Rage and Cat what they thought about their homes. How do you two like the home, guys? Yeah, I'm happy about that. I'm glad you two like yours. It's good. 
I then put Carol's home and finished my home off and got some needed sleep in my new humble abode. Now after all that building it's time for our first item hunt for the summoning and this will be Operation Shark Teeth. Yes, with Skipper being my right hand man on this hunt we're off to one of the beaches on the coast and the first beach we checked there were no sharks to be seen so we continued along the shoreline where we found three sharks. The first one we fought with the help of Skipper and took it down with ease. But the other two I decided to slay with my trusty sword to give Skipper some time to recover. And after that slaying, I dropped off all them teeth into the temple and were one step closer to summoning the Megapithecus. On the next day it was time to take down an Alpha Kano for the first time to give myself some of that sweet Alpha XP. But this is not going to be easy. So I stayed on this cliff just above this Alpha Kano and I was biffing my stones at it from a length doing chip damage and slowly taking it down. But then tragedy happened as the Alpha Kano somehow climbed this cliff and got to me and killed Arrow. Poor Arrow, another loss. Then I tried to take it down with my trusty sword but I lost my life too. So I headed back in with rage to fight him but this wasn't a good idea either. So I had to retreat for now and come back tomorrow. I will take him down. Trust me. So on the next day I collected a bunch of resources to make more stones to throw at that alpha. And then I got straight back at him. And he started to do circles in the water. After a while. I don't know what the silly man's doing. But I kept on throwing my stones at him. Well he tried to munch on some dead dinosaur. And I had to finish him off with spares. But it happened. We did it. He was a level 130 so he had some health. And we got a nice 8 levels to power myself up with. Feeling like a strong monkey. So on the next day I recovered all my gear from that death. And also grabbed Arrow's saddle which I will have to give to another Tyranodon. So I headed out and befriended another one. Hi there. Yeah it's sad but they were warriors. Okay scout I guess you'll help me scout. So I guess that's a bit of a bummer but I prepped myself for another journey to get myself a new flying friend tomorrow. Overnight, Nicholas passed away. I, I don't know how he died, but we can't stay here and mourn. We headed out on Skipper on our way to befriend a birdie. I collected this grenade from this drop, which I can throw, so that might be some explosive power for me to use in the future. I managed to find two RGs, which I aggroed both of them somehow. So I split them up and started pelting this one with my Trank Spears for some love. But after a few, he got a bit scared and flew out over the ocean. So I'm gonna need to trap one instead. So I ended up building a home on top of this mountain to rest overnight so we can continue this little mission tomorrow. So I started collecting some resources to make a trap and more spears on the next day. The first bird was still out at sea so I'm gonna go for the other one. So I set up the trap and then lured the other one in. Gave it a nice dose of track spear love and we became friends. Sorry about the trap but it's nice to meet you. Of course you can, but will you help me take down the King Dinopithecus? Then let's get going. We camped out on the top of the mountain for the night before we decide to head back tomorrow. Then we had the long, and I mean a long journey home. We made it. It was a stupid long journey though. So I decided to build Annabelle's home above mine. She seemed to like it a lot. Then we ended up befriending this dire bear. Well, hello, Mr. Bear. Well, Dave, I'm on a mission and could use your help. Well, that's good news to me. The next two days were all about gathering resources with the help of Dave and Annabelle. So on day 53 I built this inner gate, but I've lost the footage for this day, so enjoy this little picture of it I guess from day 54. So on the next day I built up a wooden fence wall plus added some spike walls to make the inner village protected as much as I can have it. And also got some savage planted, which means we've got all the veggies planted now. Now it's time for a journey for a trusty steed as any king needs. 
And on that journey, I collected this very useless purple drop. But that's part of the arc experience, isn't it? The first steed I found was a weakling. It would not be king worthy, but the second one was perfect. And I rode him until he was calm and happy with me being able to ride him. He's called Zeus, and he is straight royalty. It's time for another operation. And this time, it's Operation Bird Hunting. Yes, we're going to be hunting down some Argies for their talons help us summon the Megapithecus. So we headed up to the snow where Argies are very common. And the first one I found was stuck between these trees, so we slayed it for its talons. Then I took down another and then one more. To get the last talons we needed, we dropped them talons off of the temple to end off the mission. One step closer boys, one step closer. So on day 57, I killed another Alpha Kano, and then came back to base to see a massive commotion at the front gate. And Sunny and Daisy's home was damaged. It needed some repairs. But first, I put down a bunch more spike walls to help protect the inner village so that probably won't happen again. So the next day was all about collecting resources to help fix up Sunny and Daisy's home. And with all them resources, I rebuilt their home and then spotted a juvenile Dinopithecus running around in the castle grounds. I was intrigued to see that I could feed him some raw meat. Found out he was called Saru and took him to Raging Cat to get some info. Do you guys know this young lad? Ah, that annoying king. Well, you are safe to stay here if you don't steal. Well, that's good to know. Now it is day 60, it's time for another operation hunt. And that is operation for the last Rex arm. Yes, I only need one more Rex arm for the summoning items. So we headed out with Annabelle, and the first Rex I spotted was an Alpha Rex, and they don't drop their arms. So, and also that's probably gonna be instant death for me, so no, no, no. I then found a Rex near the volcanic biome. And we started attacking him until he was weak, and that's when I charged him with my sword to slay this Rex and cut off his arms. On our way home, we spotted another Alpha Kano, and I had to take it down. I started by just hovering in this spot where I could hit it, but it couldn't hit me. But after a while, it just got annoyed and ran off like a chicken, so we're going to have to chase him down. I managed to finish off the Alpha Kano on the following day by throwing stones at it from up on this cliff. Managed to get two levels from doing this, and unlocked the ability to make a Spino saddle. And I knew a Spino would be a powerful ally to have. So we jumped off the arms at them to the temple to end off the day. So on day 62, we started Operation Snake Venom. Yes, we're hunting down Titanoboa for their venom, so I can get one step closer to the summoning of the Megapithecus. I first headed to the swamp at the bottom of the Redwoods, but there were no snakes here at all. I was lucky enough to get this good pike from this drop. And then we spotted our first snake, having a fight with a Stego and a second close by. Managed to get venom from both of them, which was a bonus. I found one more, which also gave me some venom. Which was super lucky, as sometimes you get no venom from taking these things down. So we dropped off the venom to the temple to end off the day. So day 63 was all about refilling my spares up as I'm going on a spino hunt. To befriend and also low tail ones will be taken down for their sales. Also made a saddle in preparation. Operation Spino Hunt starts today. And there happened to be a level 100 close to the castle. Which I'll leave alone to befriend later. If I can't find a higher one. So I headed down to check some of the uncommon spots Spino spawn, but I had no luck here. Then I headed on my way to the Swamp Lakes, but it was getting too late, so I rested up for the night near Green Obelisk. We continued on our hunt the next day with no luck at the first spot. But then I spotted a weakling at the second spot who we slayed for its sale. I then found another one at the third spot where these annoying terror birds killed it. So I had to murder the mess of dinos here before I could even grab the sail. Like there's a lot of things here. But... Luckily after doing that, we got the sail from this little baggie. And then that was the last one we saw for the day. So I tried to trap that level 100 on the next day in this really basic trap. And well, they didn't work because this trap wasn't good enough. So I tried to track him out the old classic way by just sitting up on top of the castle and hitting with my track spears. But he decided he wanted to go to sleep in the river, which means he will drown. I tried to see if I can use the lasso to save him, but my monkey hands can't hold onto the rope. 
so I had to put him out of his misery. And we didn't even get a sale from this, so that was just a full waste of time. During the night, while I was sleeping, Boris was attacked and lost his life. My poor boy. My poor mate. He's gone. So, I started a new operation. Operation Thin the Herd. And this is where I will steal the kids from my enemies and raise them for my army. First, we got Toby. And then we got Uzuna. But, any weaklings that I spotted were instantly snack food for Annabelle. So, I decided to put the Operation Thin the Herd on standby for the moment, as I have a different operation that will end up helping out for that, and that is Operation Wyvern Egg Stealing. Yes, this Gigantopithecus is going to ride a Wyvern. So, I headed to the Wyvern Trench with Skipper, and our first flight through, I couldn't spot any eggs and got chased down by some Wyverns. But on our second run through, I spotted a nest with an egg and then flew straight past this Giga. Which, I ain't going anywhere near that danger. Hell no. No, no, no. Nowhere near that thing. I went in and snagged that egg, but took some damage on the way out. We got it home and started incubating it with all these standing torches. The classic way of incubating an egg. And in the early hours of day 69, the baby poison wyvern hashed. And I called him Venom. Then, with the help of Toby and Uzuna, we cleared up the castle grounds of the intruders. So I set them up for guard duty at the front gate. They'll make sure nothing gets in the in the city. It's time for another hunt. And that being Operation Brain Extraction. Yes, we're hunting the pack leader Allos. I found one pack and took them down one by one, extracting their brains each time. This scored me three brains. But then I couldn't find any more, so we had to continue the operation tomorrow. I managed to find three more taking a dip in the lake. I managed to slay all three. Getting the remaining brains I needed for the summoning. We're getting so much closer. So much closer, man. This temple's looking full with all the summoning items I need. Now, for another hunt mission. This time, it's Operation Tickle Fingers. Yes, we need some claws from the one and only Tickle Chicken Therizinosaurus. And I found one very quickly and got the kill. And the claws. That's another step closer to summoning the Megapithecus. Then, I went to get another wyvern. But when chicken in there, there were only poison wyvern eggs. And I wanted a different type of wyvern this time. So I headed to the ice wyvern trench where I snagged a level 150 egg and rushed it back to base and got it incubating. Got some power here now, boys. And in the early hours of day 73, the egg hash giving us the ice wyvern frostbite. Then we continued operation thin the herd. And we got to meet Jeff. And I had some questions for him. Jeff, do you know who the king's grandson is? Well, okay, you can eat at the village, though. Well, he didn't have that much information, so I'm going to ask this one instead. Hi, what's your name? I wanted to know if you knew the king's grandson. Oh, that's his name. Thanks for the info. Operation Spider Hunt was back on. And well, from day 74 to 76, I had absolutely no luck spotting a Spino. It's just like they've disappeared. They've gone into hiding. And I think the King Dinopithecus has something to do with this. A cheeky, cheeky king. But luckily, I was able to take down three Spinos on day 77. Now, with their sails in the temple, I have everything ready to summon the Megapithecus, which we will do before the king shows his face in my castle. So now it's time that I befriend a Spino, and well, there was one stomping around the castle. And this turned into the most janky experience ever, as my trap was still useless, so I was sparing it from the castle walls all over the place until it knocked out cold under the bridge, like a little troll. So finally, on day 79, I befriended a Spino. Nice to meet you, Mr. Spino. Well, Spike, do you want to take down the king with me? Yep, I'm gonna take him down. Sweet ass. I'm very glad he has agreed to help me take down the king. His power on my side is gonna be very handy. And handy indeed it was, as we were able to submit this Dinopithecus called Mitus to our side. Day 80 was all resources and more spares. I think it's time we get ourselves a healer, someone who can make sure my army is all healthy for the fight. And that, 
I think it's going to be a Daedon, but not any Daedon, a High Priestess one. So I headed out to the snow, and found a group of Daedons. I snagged one up and dropped it into my trap to check its power level. But it was a weakling, so I dealt with it swiftly. Also found another one, but it also was a low tier one, so he was dealt with as well. I kept on hunting in the snow on day 82, but was only finding low level witches. Man, it wasn't looking good, so I'm probably going to have to head to the desert and check the desert piggies out instead. And well, on day 83, we journeyed to the desert land to check out the desert piggies. And it was a journey and a half, with us having to stop on this island before we reached the desert. I first found a group of desert piggies, and they were all trash low level tear witches, so they were eliminated from the face of the earth. Found two more groups of them, both packs for low tears, so they were gone, dusted, frozen. So we rested up for the night on top of this pillar. Hopefully we will find a high priestess tomorrow. And on the next day I found another group. And there was a high priestess, each year level 145. So I had to befriend her. Hello Madame Daedon. Terra, can you help me by healing my army? To take down the king and become human again. Thank you, ma'am. And now it's time to journey back home with terror in my claws. It was a fly and a half, but we made it home. I decided to build terror at home on day 85 and then spent the rest of the day getting resources for the final battle. And now on day 86, it's time for our final operation and that being Operation Find Enma. And the only way we we're gonna do this was using the Thin the Herd tactic. And this started with this little guy. Do you know where Enma is? Uh huh. Uh, okay. Odd. Well, he had no info, so on to the next one. Have you seen Enma? So I'm looking in the wrong places. Huh. Okay. Well, that, that's nice. We'll hunt on tomorrow. I found this team, Dinopithecus, the next day. Do you know Enma? I need to find the Mesa. Fine then. Well, he didn't want to give me any info, so he can enjoy fighting the king. Cheeky. Bugger. Then I met this young lad who had some info for me. Do you know Enma's location? What do you mean by west? Ah, well thank you for the info. So with that info I headed to the west and found a monkey. She had some words to say. Have you met Enma? Oh, is that right? Whereabouts? Hmm, okay, I'll look for him. We continued hunting in the west in day 88, where we found someone who had some smart parents. But I hadn't seen anything. O okay. Well, he can hang with his kind waiting for the war. Then we met this youngling, who gave me some more info. Have you seen Enma? Well, thanks for the info, young one. So, to the southwest we went on day 89. And while there weren't too many monkeys in this area, it felt a little bare. I was hunting for a while, but then I found one. Who had some wise words to say. Has Enma been in the southwest? Have you seen him elsewhere though? Well I am, I guess. And Jamie did say south, but not what area. So maybe it was southeast. I have 10 days left to break this curse and I'm kind of stressing. But we will continue our hunt for Enma the grandson of the king, in the southeast zone of the Redwoods. And this is where we met a young girl, who had seen him a lot. Have you seen Enma at all? Oh, he does now? How often do you see him? Wow, that's music to my ears. Well then, we might be onto something. We continued our hunt in the east and met this young lady. Has Enma been around? Oh, has he? Well, thank you for the info. Well, we are getting closer to medium. And then we met this other young lady who was up close in the mountainside. Have you spotted Enma recently? The outskirts? Hmm, interesting. Hmm. The outskirts is an interesting place for royalty to be hanging out. 
but we'll have to check it out. We're off to the outskirts of the east side on day 92 is rare, but it's really hard to find any monkeys out here. And also, they are known to be very standoffish, like the first one I met. Where's Enma? Well, I will find him. Okay, no words from that boy, but hopefully this one will cough up some information for me. Do you know of Enma's location? Oh, up north, why is that? Well, that's good to know. Now we know where the boy is at. We'll use him as bait to lure out the King Dinopithecus. And since I'm going to need a cage to house Enma in, I needed some resources before I can build it, and that's all I did on day 93, was collect them resources. I spent the day of 94 building the cage on top of the castle tower just behind our crafting area, and this was taking a while to get set up, but by the end of the day, I was very close to having it done, so some rest will do me wonders before I finish it off. I finished up the cage and headed up into the north on the next day to hunt down Enma. I found one monkey, but he wasn't Enma. Is Enma in the north? Ah, well, I will get him. Well, if he's up there, then we'll get him today. And then I found him. Then I put him straight in the cage and had a little chat with him. Hello, Enma. Because I need to get your grandfather's attention. Revenge for turning me into a Gigantopithecus. Yes, and I have five more days left to make sure it doesn't stick. Well, at least you have a head on you. On day 96, I spent the day making room for the Megapithecus to roll out to the battlefield, and also got the army lined up in the field. Now, on day 97, I wrote up a note and headed to the temple, where the King Dinopithecus transformed me into this Gigantopithecus. And there was a box at the temple for, like, donations. So I dropped it off there and headed home, hoping he'll show his face in 48 hours, because that's all the time he had left. Two days are left to break the curse, and today I'm making sure the army is healed up, and it's time to give them a war speech on Zeus. Tomorrow, we achieve the impossible. We will take down the king and save this land from his corruption. You will be free from his reign. Free to roam the land safely. Everyone, be ready, as tomorrow, we go to war. Well, my note said 48 hours, and since it's day 99, this should be the day the king shows up. So I got up early, and headed to the temple, and summoned the Megapithecus. Morning, sir. You did? Will you help me take down the king? Let's go. Then we waited for the king to show up with my army all ready to go. Here he is, everyone charging and attack. And the battle began. And I stuck on the back of Mithicus as he hurled rocks at the king. And then for some reason, Scout had joined the battle, even though he said he wouldn't help me in this case. And he was the first to lose his life to the king. Then we lost Venom, my poor boy. As we continued our fight, we would lose more souls. We then lost Dave the Bear, Mike the Megatherium, Carol the Carno, Phoebe, our wonderful partner. Then, right as we slayed the king, Sonny lost his life too. Nah, the pain, the pain. This was painful, but we did it, you stupid fool. You stupid monkey, you ain't no king no more. I was tired after that battle, and I hadn't changed back to a human, so maybe it didn't work. Maybe this battle wasn't worth it. So, on day 100, I released Enma in the morning, and brought him down to the center of the village. <sighs> well, everyone, Enma here will be your new king. He has plans to make this land fair for all of you, and will base his efforts out of this castle where we have built up a little village, and hopefully he'll turn it into a nice city. Will you all help him in his journey? Well, thank you all for your help with my efforts, and we will never forget our lost comrades. Then I felt light and tingly as I started to float into the air, and it went all white. Once I could see again, I noticed I'm human again. I did it. I broke the course. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, back to smacking rocks with my hatchet, stupid king. <laughs>